Hello guys, it's Claymore here. So you've probably seen the title of the video and are expecting some big takes and big opinions, and trust me, there definitely will be. But first, I'm going to preface this video a little with more about where I come from with my experiences and opinions regarding Tarkov. So, I began playing Escape from Tarkov in early 2019, and pretty much have played it nearly every day since then, streaming it included, and also including some breaks here and there too. I'm passionate about the game, I'm supportive of Battlestate games, and I'm very much involved with this amazing community within the game. I want this game to do well, and I want this game to become one of the best, if not the best shooter on the market. And to help BSG do this, I've also known when to fairly and constructively critique the decisions they make. So, I'm going to say this firstly and foremost. The game is in the best state it's been in since I started playing the game. Does that mean it's absolutely perfect? Absolutely fucking not. Have the devs made mistakes regarding design decisions? Yeah, they have. But that also doesn't mean we get to treat them like shit, and that doesn't mean we get to harass them and debate them on social medias. They're human beings, they make mistakes, this is still a learning curve for them. As long as we get that clear, alright? Prefacing done? Sweet? Alright, let's get started. Over these many years playing the game, testing the countless additions, new features, and providing feedback whilst observing the various changes happening within both the game and the community, I can confidently and ultimately boil down the game's current major issues to two, that's right, just two main things. The first thing is, drumroll please. Yeah, it's the flea market. Oh, jeez, oh, oh, come on, all right, okay. All right, give me a freaking chance to explain, yeah? Shit. To begin with, it's not that I don't like the flea market. If anything, I think it's a great concept and good things have come with the flea market. It's made of tea, which is at its core extremely punishing and hardcore, more accessible to a wider range of players and has given them more opportunities to run the stuff they'd like to run, either because they want to or they want to try and keep up with the more full-time players and streamers. These are good things. But the simple and harsh truth is that the flea market has done more harm and more bad things to the game than the good it's brought with it, whether due to its own fault or indirectly because of the flea market. One of these side effects is, of course, the massive increase of cheaters and the rise of RMT. If you've been living under a rock all this time playing Tarkov and you don't know what RMT is, it stands for Real Money Transactions. Essentially, you are buying stuff from third-party sites outside the terms of service of the game and taking those into your main personal account to into your Tarkov client. It, it, is, it is liable for banning. Don't do it. Don't even think about it. It sucks. It harms the game. It harms the developers. Just, just don't do it, all right? Prefaced? Good. Let's continue. There wasn't really any point in cheating in EFT back then because it was a dead-end thing to do. With, and with the constant wipes, cheating just for the sake of cheating, uh, for those who did it, uh, would become boring very quickly. There was nothing to be really be gained from it. The gear they'd get would just wipe. That there was no incentive for them to cheat in the first place. And bear in mind, this is way before Battle Eye was even a twinkle in BSG's eye. Um, when the flea market hit, though, boom, massive increase of cheaters to the point we weren't encountering them every few weeks, every week. It was daily. I'm not joking about why. Why did why, why were we suddenly seeing them? Uh, so much more uh, after the flea market came out. Uh, because suddenly cheating in EFT in general had this new purpose. Making money for RMT sites. And back then, it was fucking easy to do it. Yes, we have had Battle Eye, and we have had various changes and limitations to the flea market since then to combat this huge RMT issue, which is still, to this day, a big issue. But this simply wouldn't have happened if the flea market wasn't a thing. Cheaters still wouldn't have had any real incentive to cheat in the game, and when Battle Eye would have eventually come anyways, it would have been even rarer seeing any. It's a massive shame, of course, that a great concept like the flea market has been so heavily abused by these utter leeches and pawn scum for human beings, but these are the facts. Another side effect that has done more harm to the game than good regarding the market is how progression and rewarding time in the game has become a lot less meaningful and rewarding because of the flea market. Before the market, your only real way to progress and get to the good stuff was via your traders. You do tasks for them, increase their levels, unlock better and cooler stuff that gave you a brief edge over the players who weren't quite at your progression level. Don't get me wrong, this system still had plenty of flaws, and doing the same tasks with mild changes every single wipe over and over 
has absolutely shaved away at the very fabric of my soul. Please send help. It hurts. But back then, and still uh, to a degree before the flea market over those wipe cycles, hitting those level milestones and unlocking those trader tiers always felt amazing. It literally opened up an entire new layer of the game that made progression feel like you had actually earned what was at the end of that the rainbow, you know, the pot of gold at the end of it. With the flea market, doesn't matter anymore, mate. At level 10, you pretty much get access to anything at all within the game, up my prices aside, and tie that in with the fact that insanely rewarding maps like Labs and Reserve are still available at day one of a wipe cycle. Just makes it this even worse, pretty much. Now we have to ask ourselves, is the better accessibility to the game's gear via the market for newer players really worth it if those newer players haven't experienced the same reward for the time they spend in the game like we did back then? And before you say it, no, the market isn't good for casual players or those with less time to play. Come here, let me tell you a secret, right? I promise it's gonna, it's gonna blow your mind, right? It's actually terrible for newer players. And on to the next side effect of the market. So one of the main arguments uh, that a lot of players make for the favor of the flea market is that the players with less time, you can call them casuals, whatever you want to call them, uh, can still make a decent amount of money uh, to then invest in kits, ammo, all the good stuff, so that can, they can stand a chance against those uh, players with thousands and thousands of hours of the game, right? Okay. What do you think the players with thousands and thousands of hours are doing in the game as well? They're making insane amounts of money compared to you, which means that they can run those high tier kits a lot more frequently than you and the other players who can't farm as much can. They actively farm and farm and farm whilst the other players can't do that due to their own time restraints. They don't feel any real loss if they die, yet the other players feel that loss a lot more. Have I blown your mind yet? Before the market, you wouldn't see anywhere near as much consistently high end gear amongst players so fast within a wipe cycle because back then it meant a lot more. You either got lucky finding it in the world off scab bosses, raiders, etc., or you had access to it from the traders. The economy was obviously nowhere near as inflated prior to the flea market, so everyone felt lost way, way, way more than these days at least. Which leads to the last major side effect of the flea market the economy is just. I have 100 mil rubles and 250k USD, and I don't even farm. I'm not even trying to make money. It's busted, that's all I have to say about it. So I could spend another chunk of the video explaining what to do, how to fix all this stuff. Um, that will probably be for another video, because there's a lot of ideas to talk about there. Uh, so I'm going to avoid doing that, but I will say this. The game was fine before the flea market. It'll be fine without it. Maybe Battle State would like to try out just one wipe without the flea market, just to see what everybody's reactions are like to it. Maybe, I don't know. People are just freaking punching their keyboards and, and, and drop kicking their monitors. Then Alvin have suggested that. But guys, just one wipe. Just one wipe. Consider it. You might have fun. All right. The second major issue in Tarkov is, in my opinion, whilst a bit more insidious than something like the flea market, one that can be at least remedied easier than the flea market. And that is the state of the player base. To preface again, no, it's not that I think the community is all doom and gloom now, no, not at all. There are still many fantastic people out there, many sportsman like players, many positive content creators out there that are the real core of the community. And to those people, you know who you are. Keep doing what you're doing. We all appreciate you. I'm instead referencing the steady decline of sportsmanship the diluted sense of community and the out of control accusation culture that has eaten away at the community in general. And it all pretty much started happening with the success of Point 12 and the first major Twitch Drops event. Uh, we had a flood of people trying out it for the first time, including some big names on Twitch. The game just had an absolute turn of great exposure. And back then, I, and still now, I couldn't be happy about more people get to pl play this amazing game. But over time, I've seen either in my chat, friends chats, online forums, social media, etc. how a lot of these people just react in the most unbelievably upset and toxic ways upon dying. I've seen people mindlessly complaining and whining over a issue over Twitter without adding anything constructive to their complaint. Uh, obviously not using the, their launcher to report bug, etc. Um, and uh, don't get me wrong. 
Once again, there are always bad apples in any community, and EFT had its way before the game even became super popular like it is now. You know, there were still bad apples there. Uh, but not to this scale. And all onto your seats, people, because I, I'm taking off the gloves for this one. Let me start off by giving you an example of how this all kind of started, at least in my perspective. I had TV in my in-game name for the longest time and had minimal instances of stream sniping prior to point 12. I had to turn it off only three weeks into the Twitch Drops event. It literally reached the point where nearly every squad I ran into uh, and partially wiped certainly knew exactly where I seemed to be going. Uh, they were nading the angles I was holding without making any noise. Generally getting info where they simply couldn't have gotten it, etc, etc. Not a big deal. I changed my name either way and solved the issue. That was about a year and a bit ago, and about two weeks ago I put TV back in my name, most because I just reached the point where I'm comfortable enough in my skill set as a tackle player, and I, at this point, I really don't care if I die to beta males who, like stream snipers, that just can't fight me fairly. I don't really care anymore. Unfortunately, whilst not as rampant, it's still happening fairly often. Now, that isn't to say that I haven't had a lot of really, really cool people, really sportsmanlike players coming after fights, chill out, we talk about the fight, and some of the, even to this day are regulars, and to those people, I really appreciate you. The good in this instance definitely outweighs the bad, but it's still there regardless, and it's another symptom of the decline of sportsmanship. And speaking of, once again, not our way in the good interactions, a fair number of people will come into the chat, not just my chat, of all people's chats too, and just blow the lid at you. Go off on one. And before people start saying, you know, you have TV in your name, you should expect it, you know, you, you, you're you bound to get idiots coming into chat. No. 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 Putting TV in my name doesn't mean that people get to come in and act like absolute single-cell organisms. If you think that, you're a dumbass. And no, it isn't a standard by any means either. Uh, these days in Tarkov. Uh, prior to the first Twitch Drops event, I could count on literally both hands how many idiots I had to deal with in chat. I, I think I had to ban maybe like three people in a full year. And this is the reason why I'm bringing it up. It's not an issue of streamers not having thick enough skin to deal with it. Anyone should be able to deal with the occasional moron that comes in. It's a link in the chain. The next link being how absolutely out of hand accusation culture has gone in the community. If a person killed you, it absolutely could not have been legit, nor was it your fault that you died. It was desync, it was hit reg, it was jiggle peeking, it was peeker's advantage, it was a hacker, it was a camper, it was an extract camper. It, the list goes on and fucking on. Yes, some of these things outlie issues within EFT that require work. Yes, people do die to dumb shit in the game. Like, for example, throwing a nade at two player scabs who was backed up in a train car in reserve and a box blocks him from dying. Yeah, I'm projecting a bit with that one. But unless it is extremely obvious that you died regarding a technical fault, guys, just get over yourselves. Move on. Rekit. Get back into it. Sometimes Tarkov will get you killed because fuck you, that's why. You know, we all experience it. We all experience the same bad luck here and there. It happens. Any Tarkov player worth their salt knows this. I put this into practice myself a long, long time ago. And I started enjoying the game a lot more too. I, I'm handling everything better now. Uh, even when wipes drag. And even when high level players were naked with the K23. Sort your fucking lives out, mate. The toxic culture has also given way to the infamous, originally pretty innocent, uh, Rat versus Chad meme. Uh, before I continue though with this point, uh, I asked this of you wonderful viewers uh, who are uh, watching this video and hopefully not about to punch your monitor. Go to three friends of yours right now and ask them what they think a rat is. Go on. I'll wait.
let me guess. They all gave you definitions that ranged pretty greatly, right? This is what happened when this meme hit the community at large, and as it's worked its way through this part of it that we've been talking about, bled into the accusation culture. And now, if you even play a little slower than a Shift W playstyle, fuck you, you're a rat. But because of this, uh, many people have altered and changed the definition of a rat playstyle just to suit their own agenda and narrative. Um, just to save face in front of, I don't know, someone, I guess? <laughs> I can give you guys two recent, as in like within the last seven days, uh, instances of where this came into play. The first game I spawned in right outside behind Goshen, I full sprint inside and run into the central uh, part of Ultra. And I see two geared fellas running up the eskies, uh, not a care in the world, and I kill one of them, and then take shots at the other dude, run up, we trade shots a little bit, but ultimately I outplay him. As soon as this happened, they immediately come into the chat and accuse me of being a rat when not even two minutes has passed in this race. Oh god, what are you on about? I told them to look through my VOD and they just weren't happy. They were absolutely convinced I was this rat playstyle, uh, that I was camping the eskies, and then I was holding this, uh, and I managed to get this all done and locked up within, within a minute and a half into the game. The second instance is where I'm caught between multiple teams fighting both me and each other after my teammate dies right outside Kiba. And after killing a few different players, and of course one of them comes into my chat and he's very, very mad that I killed him, uh, I decide to play it a little bit safer than I usually do. And because I'm not sure if this mad person has a teammate or not, I decide to throw up my screen to stop any potential stream sniping. Just because there was a lot of happening around there and I felt like just trying to give myself an extra chance there. So in between this happening, I kill some more players and in, this is including two guys up in the hex above me. Uh, one guy peeked and the other dude uh, was uh, trading shots with me, and I managed to kill him too. Now, there's still lots of fighting happening. I'm still trading shots with other players. My armor's running out, my ammo's running out, my meds are running out, and I decide that I can't really fight any longer efficiently, and I decide to cut my losses, pick up what I can, rescue my buddy's stuff, and then retreat, because I simply just couldn't hold down a fight anymore. I didn't have the armor for it. One of the teammates I killed came into my chat Whilst he was also streaming himself, he was live during this entire thing. And he told me, I'm a bad player because I killed him and a teammate. I didn't commit. And I, I'm, I'm, I, I decided to, to retreat. And th this makes me a, a terrible player. I'm trash at the game. And if you don't believe me, there is the screenshot of his comments uh, right before I banned him. So in this guy's mind, and unfortunately this seems to be the case for a lot of people currently as well, if you don't adhere to a full commitment, full send style of player, then guess what? You're shit, mate. Well, guess what, my dudes? The point of a raid isn't to rack up plenty of kills. The point of a raid isn't to increase your KD. It's to survive. That's the ultimate goal. And uh, much to popular dismay, you don't have to commit to every single fight you get into. I enjoy pushing PvP fights. I enjoy wrecking squads. And I almost definitely enjoy taking my winnings and getting out with them after the fights died down. But I also enjoy surviving, and if I can't feel like I can adhere to a fight and hopefully not get Thorax down, or if my visor's damaged, or whatever, yada yada yada, it's a good idea maybe just to cut your losses and run. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. If you've already gotten plenty of PMC kills, and you've already gotten a full bag, and if you can also rescue some of your teammates' stuff as well, you do you. But in the, uh, the minds of a lot of players right now, if you don't do that, if you don't commit completely to any single fight, and if you don't shift W all your way to the next person, if you're not jumping across doorways, if you're not uh, pre-firing a full 60 rounder into a corner, stop playing the game, because apparently we're bad. And I don't see why this is a big issue anyway, because if one person decides to retreat and cut their losses, and I'm still on the map, um... At the end of the day, that's one less PMC I have to worry about. I can focus on other stuff too. It's beneficial for me. You know, especially if it happens pretty early on on a map where I know for a fact most of the loot spots haven't been hit yet. It is absolutely ridiculous how much people will just mindlessly and aimlessly slam others without any context that prior to their fights, or they just flat out ignore the context if they're given it, and immediately uh, label them just to save their own fragile and precious egos, it feels like. 
we can go deeper into this whole topic and say, you know, this has been a problem in gaming communities for as long as it's been around, and it's always going to be the case in shooters and competitive environments, yada, yada, yada. But I need to repeat myself one more time, and this is the reason why I'm bringing this up and why I think this is an issue in the Tarkov community specifically. It did not used to be this bad back before the game blew up. This isn't a, you know, reminiscing about the golden days or anything like that. This is this, 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 the truth of the state of the community right now. Yes, as some people have told me to do so, just ignore the uh, negative side of everything. Just, you know, block out these people, ban them immediately, you know, and I do all these things and stuff like that. But how else are we supposed to encourage others to grow and become better community members and uh, go enable them to enjoy the game better if we just ignore them? The Escape from Tarkov community, and this is why I love the community so much, is unique in of itself because everybody suffers in this game. Everybody equally dies. Everybody equally suffers bad luck. It's not discriminatory. It's not directed to a certain type of player. We all suffer together. And because of Tarkov being as brutal and unfair as it can be sometimes, this particular community became more tight knit as a whole. You know, like... We team up with each other. We drop each other valuable task items if we need them. We drop each other loadouts when we run out of loadouts. We educate each other when questions are asked. You know, we're told what the, the right play is here and there, and so on and so forth. That's what makes the community in Escape from Tarkov better than any others out there. Unfortunately, there are a lot of shitheads out there who do their own thing, and act their frustrations out in the worst ways, and have no interest of in getting involved. Uh, but there are still many players out there who can be showed this amazing camaraderie that a lot of us veteran players know and love and share with each other. And to those players, I'm speaking to you directly now, do not fall into the accusation culture. Do not condition yourself to assume every death isn't your fault. Be better, be sportsman-like, and I can guarantee you, you'll enjoy Tarkov a lot more than what you are right now. And there we have it. Uh, in my opinion, those are the two main overshadowing problems currently doing more harm than good to escape from Tarkov. Opinions, that's what they are. Uh, it's not a matter of me thinking I'm right. There's some stuff that probably a lot of people don't agree with, especially the second part of that video there. Uh, but this is uh, me sharing my own experiences, and this is me stating at least some factual information along the way to support some of my opinion pieces. And if you manage to sit for all of that, uh, then mad respect to you. Uh, and if you have anything to add to what I said, or if you'd like to debate what I've talked about in a constructive and civil manner, uh, reach out to me via the comment section down below, uh, through my Discord. You can also reach over to me on my Twitch. Uh, I stream six out of seven days a week. Uh, I'm a full-time streamer, so come over and chill. Either is fine with me. Links are all down below, as per always. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it, guys. Take care, stay safe, love you all, and peace. <laughs>